Hello friends, Chris Oliver here. Uh, I made a video last night and uh, completely did not realize that uh, it was way too dark because I was filming at night and there were some lights behind me and I thought it would be enough light because it was perfectly easy to see out here. Um, <laughs> but uh, apparently my camera is uh, pretty crappy so I'm filming again during the day. And uh, just, uh, just in case you need an example that I am in no way perfect, I do indeed make mistakes. Uh, but my mistakes are beautiful because my mistakes are a part of God's plan and God's plan is perfect. It's, it's really that simple. I'm just going to keep saying these things. We live in a very simple, simple universe. Um, so, uh, my logical path to crazy is the name I gave this video last time. And uh, I, I feel that is a, a very a very apt title, so we will stick with that. But uh, about a month ago, I was uh, woken up, spiritually in a way, uh, by nothing I could I could see, and uh, I was drawn into a web of conspiracy. I uh, finally started asking myself questions about 9/11, which I'm kind of 15 years late on. Um, and uh, you know uh, that just kind of really it snowballed from there. Uh, I looked at uh, testimony from Ted Gunderson. Uh, Bill Cooper, uh, Chip Tatum, and all three of those are ex, either ex-Navy or ex-CIA. Um, I also listened to a lot of stuff about the Montauk Project from uh, Preston Nichols and uh, Al Bielik. Uh, Al Bielik is uh, a pretty dry speaker, but he does share, uh, he does tell one fascinating story, one fascinating story, and uh, it, it also really helped me realize just kind of the scope of the problem and how it all uh, it all kind of started with Nikola Tesla and how it was all the all the conspiracy theory about aliens out there is basically a cover for introducing demons into our society and how Bill Co Cooper's uh, UFO testimony uh, from the uh, 60s I believe I believe it was the early 60s he's looking dapper in a white suit in it uh, in the early 60s uh, well anyway he made a uh, he made a public address about the U.S. Navy uh, uh, aliens program, and I just kept learning all this information and all this information, and I will go into more of the details here shortly, and I finally realized that, you know, Bill Cooper was telling the same story as Angels versus Demons, he was just telling it in a far more 20th century format with, with aliens, but symbolically it was, it was the same story. And, uh... Uh, I become familiar with the work of Dr. Judy Wood, who is a forensics engineer who studied the aftermath of 9/11 for uh, a decade or so, and concluded that those buildings were taken down by <coughs> being destroyed on a on a molecular level, that they were hit by some sort of electromagnetic attack, and uh, that was that was a really big clue for me, especially the hurricane that most people have forgotten, the hurricane that com accompanied 9/11. Before the attacks, it had been traveling uh, north by northwest up the coast of America, not too close, no, none of the, uh, didn't make landfall, uh, but it got relatively close to New York City on 9-11 and then stayed right there next to New York City uh, until the uh, last tower fell, until the seventh tower went down, and then it started moving uh, slowly away northeast. And it is, it is the kind of hurricane pattern that is in no way looks natural and, and, and no force of nature that I understand would make a hurricane move that direction, coincidentally chill out next to a major attack and then move away. So that was that was a really big clue for me, just the, uh, just the fact that it was electromagnetism uh, at play. And uh, then I started learning about the Montauk Project, which I was talking about Preston Nichols and Al Bielik there. And, uh, that is really the, the fringe of the conspiracy world. That Montauk Project is, is crazy out there. Uh, Montauk Project is somewhat related to MK Ultra. Uh, if you've heard of that, uh, there are some MK Ultra Senate testimony uh, videos on YouTube, and it is a heartbreaking story from two women who were just two of many subjects who were put through these uh, horrific processes and uh, under the name of uh, government, secret government projects for mind control. That was, that was MKUltra. Um, 
Well, anyways, the, the more I kept learning about these things, uh, the more, you know, I just kind of kept asking myself, is this, does this sound like the act of man, or does this sound like the act of someone who thinks of men like cattle? And, you know, every, every, you know, 9-11, every terrorist act, that's a, a lone gunman. <laughs> Please, anytime you hear the phrase lone gunman, if you do not see video of a man with a gun, it's, Crock of lies. It is. It is utter falsity. I just. I laugh because in my head I just picture the demons going, <laughs> "Alone gunmen." <laughs> um, because they are. They are laughing at us. They are laughing at us that no one has realized they are standing right in front of us. They are laughing that no one has figured it out. Um, and now they're laughing because I've figured it out and no one's believing me. So, you know, it's it's still their game in a lot of ways. Um. I completely lost my train of thought with my, uh, <laughs> with my demon, uh, my demon analogy. What were we talking about? Montauk, yeah. Um, yeah, really learning about Montauk really opened my mind to what electromagnet, or what you can do with electromagnetism in this universe, and there are secrets about electromagnetism that we have been, uh, prevented from knowing on a global scale. Uh, I highly recommend The Science of, uh, John Hutchinson, I will try to link to that. Uh, he's a, I believe, Canadian uh, independent scientist who was just kind of fascinated by Tesla, which is ironic to me because I'm mostly sure Tesla was a demon. Like, go read up about Nikola Tesla and you will, you will, he basically comes across as like a Superman, like an early Superman. And uh, once you acknowledge that there are demons here and that they are ancient and they are brilliant, brilliant creatures, uh, a lot of things make a lot more sense. At least to me. I mean, I feel like I'm the only person in the world right now who uh, who feels it all makes sense. And really, when you stick demons in the middle of it, uh, that's that's when it starts to make sense. Um, I've learned a lot of things about spotting recently. Uh, people who are obsessed, basically, basically anything you see on TV. People who are obsessed with anything you see on TV, be it sports. Right now, they're all talking about the Olympics. I had a demon walk up to me, cool, and that was just the first thing they said was, "Hey, are you watching the Olympics?" It's that kind of, that is the subtle conditioning that is going on here. It's not uh, a loud propaganda. It is the quietest, most subtle of propaganda. It's just been spread over over 2,000 years. So people, basically anyone who is obsessed with anything on TV, you know, people who want you to remind you about the news a lot, people who ask you if you're worried about the new virus, um, none of these viruses are real. I, I cannot stress enough, these things cannot hurt us, they cannot hurt us, they can just deceive, and they are very good at that. We've been buying their bullshit for at least 2,000 years now. They've taken everything we know and given us 99% truth and 1% lies, and we just gotta hammer out that 1% lies, and we get to live in a beautiful, beautiful world again. Um, I'm not sure how well I've told my story. Um, well, okay, one point I do want to make uh, about JFK. Uh, I also learned quite a bit about JFK, and Bill Cooper was actually wrong about who shot Kennedy. It wasn't the driver, it was uh, a man in a uh, storm drain uh, in the front. But really what's most telling about the assassination of Kennedy is that there were, I believe, five snipers, maybe six, I believe it was, I believe the guy who sh actually shot him was the sixth sniper. But there were snick, six snipers coordinated around that center, it's why they used that building, is because they had enough places to put all these men. And most of the men who were there all had day jobs in the area to uh, work as a cover story for why they were there in the area, because, you know, eventually. And you just, you start looking at uh, the amount of planning that went on and the amount of coordination, uh, especially during the actual assassination itself, um, they shot down, or, uh, they all missed Kennedy because they all shot at him one at a time, and then at the very last moment of panic, they all shot at him together, and the governor that survived, that was sitting next to Kennedy, described it as if, said there was enough bullets flying by that it felt like there was a jet plane right overhead. Um, that's probably not a direct quote, don't, don't take that as a direct quote, but uh, just putting together, you know, what kind of earthly force could possibly be that coordinated. Because even with all the rumors of the Illuminati, which were, you know, the target of my hate for a little while, um, I finally realized that it doesn't matter how old, how smart, how clever any group of men could be, no man is that greedy. 
no actual human being is that greedy that they want to control as much as the quote-unquote Illuminati is trying to control. And no group of men is that well coordinated. I mean, especially, you go back and look at the JFK assassination, there's a great documentary called uh, Everything is a Rich Man's Trick. I'll try to provide a link. Um, it really goes over every little detail of the assassination, just moment by moment, and I, I, I feel it, it really nails the truth. Uh, it, of course, associates to the Illuminati, which is not true. It's all fucking demons. At this point, I'm pretty sure it's about 40% of our population. Demons. Actually demons. So, if you are human and you are hearing this, we need your help. Uh, I'm going to end it there, because I feel this uh, spiel has gone on long enough. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. I am an open book. I will happily point you at more resources or explain things further if you're interested. And for the love of your fellow man, I hope you are interested. I love you all.